CES Day 2 well underway in Las Vegas. More gadgets, connected services, you name it. More drones, more smart devices for the home are expected. Plus a few other things you might not have imagined are popping up on the floor of the show this year. Hey everyone, I'm Dan Kleffler in New York. ABC's Neil Karlinski is in the thick of it all and has a few things that he wants to show us. And Neil, I see a cage behind you there. I dare I ask, where are you? Yeah, yeah, is there gonna be a cage match? No, it's gonna be a drone. Flyhawk, here it goes, taking off. Hopefully it won't go rogue here. Um, drones are huge this year at CES. And this one, by the way, which is one of the larger ones that we've seen, actually has a camera mounted underneath, which I believe is looking at me right now. Let's see, there's a monitor over there. Chris, you wanna pan over and show the monitor? And you can, Min, take that up a little higher. And there you go, so you can have your own aerial shooting platform. They're selling this, they hope to, when it's out for 800 to 1,000 dollars. Of course, like all the drone companies here, I'm not sure exactly what the laws are going to be yet, so they're still still dealing with that. But there is such huge interest, despite the fact that they're illegal in the United States. Uh, it's incredible how many different drone displays there are. And actually, as this thing took off, how many people have started crowding around to take a look just to see this fly? Uh, so anyway, there is Flyhawk. Not to be confused, by the way, with the cool Nixie drone we saw yesterday, which you actually wear on your wrist and then fling it off. It'll take a selfie and come right back to you as a boomerang. Thank you. Thanks very much. I'm going to hop out here because, Dan, before you, I know you have questions and things, but <laughs> I have someone I want to introduce you to. And this is, this is really cool, all right? This is Sarah. California. Sarah is in California. Yeah, I'm in San Francisco sitting in my living room in front of my laptop. And, and uh, if we could show, and, and pardon the description, my wording here, Sarah's full body, because she's actually just a talking head on a screen here, rolling around. And the company is, <laughs> what, is called Beam, right? So the company is Suitable Technologies, and you're looking at a Beam, their hottest product. Hottest product. And, you know, I actually met someone earlier who said that he had a conversation with someone who uses this uh, in her real life, who's a paraplegic, and it's really expanded her world because she sends her, her unit out and has conversations and visits places. Yeah, there's so many applications for having access to uh, virtual bodies all over the planet, but one of the um, biggest humanitarian ones is definitely the sick, disabled. Um, the business world loves the efficiency and the power and the autonomy, but being able to see the children with leukemia be able to attend school is absolutely priceless. Yeah, yeah. And uh, let's walk a little bit. There's people crowding around, but you know, she goes. I mean, we've been walking around and talking. It's a little harder now that we're sort of doing television and all that, but it's amazing. And she maintains a connection on Wi-Fi or she's got a cellular connection. Hey, I'm over here. And Sarah, how many cameras do you have on that thing? I have two cameras. One's on the bottom for navigation and then one's facing, 100, facing you at 105 degrees. It's my lens. It's about a human peripheral vision. I've got one over and I've got six microphones so I can hear you so clearly. There's even one behind me in case any noise sample in a really oh, good Pardon me, pardon me, sir. Yes. You know what? It is so crowded here. There are tons of people, and she I'm the only one hitting anything. I mean, she's just skating through. Neil, does your wife What's know that you're like walking you're around a, with her? You're sitting at a laptop, right? Yeah, I'm kind of cozy over here. I'm pretty comfortable. Kind of comfortable? All right, so... Do you have any questions for Sarah, by the way? Because I'm going to let her go as we're well, walking through the chaos. Here. Yeah, well, no, I, want, I want to just talk about the fact that this is so incredibly meta. I'm in well, New you York. You can check us out at suitabletech.com. Our beam booth is in the South Hall. Um, we love being able to give everyone a smart presence device wherever they need. And I got to see if beam is right for you. So uh, Dan was starting to ask a question, but I'll just tell you, uh, as we're letting her go here, that there are, there are two models right now, and they're coming out with new ones. This is actually twenty grand. This is twenty thousand dollars, but they have a lesser unit, a few less cameras, less range, battery life, all the normal things, and that is two thousand dollars. Sarah was telling me you could use it to tuck in your kids at night, or you know, the the scary function is to have your boss uh, surprise you at work if you're out of state, like so many of us are at ABC News and and elsewhere. All of a sudden, have your boss pop in over your shoulder, just creeping up on you. All kinds of applications. That is wild, Sarah. Thank you for jo joining alongside. That is really. Um, is that it has Wi-Fi and 4G? So essentially, we can leave the hall and go party down the Vegas Strip and across restaurants and name it. 
Hey, 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 Sarah, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you go. I apologize because Dan is talking. We're, we're, we've got New York and California and Las Vegas and people crowd. It's going crazy over here. So I'm gonna let you go back to your home base. Or actually, we'll walk back there. And I'm gonna. I'm just gonna listen real quick. Dan, yeah, go ahead. No, I, I, you, you brought the point exactly. I was making right there. I mean, how incredibly meta is that that we've got three separate locations that are not necessarily being tied in and coordinated by one central area. And, and you were pointing out the fact that there's actual practical applications for something like this. I mean, we see a lot of the cool toys that you've been playing around with, Neil, but there are some actual oh. uses well, that are going to be. Neil. Thank you, Sarah. Here's her. I'm going to let her go to her home base where there, you can see there's a lot of people crowding around and there's a lot of interest. There's actually a giant one, which I hadn't seen before, but I think that's just for show. But to pick up on your point, yeah, I mean, you know, initially, listen, I was walking through the hall here and not Sarah, but one of her colleagues sort of rolled up to me and said, hey, how you doing? And I didn't know what it was, and we had a conversation, and, and that's how I learned about it. But later on, I met some people here who have nothing to do with the company, who, as I mentioned, told me about people they have met who actually use this, such as this woman who was a paraplegic. Uh, so there are real applications, and there are other companies who are doing similar devices that you know, maybe look a little more techy or have arms that move or something. I mean, this is essentially you know, a monitor on wheels, but it works. It seems incredibly, okay, so you've got walking, rolling robots there. You've got drones. I also understand that you found some smart socks with a technological advantage. Say that one more time. Sorry, it's loud. You here. also got some smart socks. Is that what I understand? Smart sock, yes. The smart sock. I mean, you know, wearables is a term that's been overused, and we all know about the, the various wristbands to count your steps and all these other things. So we came across the smart sock. By the way, here's a smart home we're passing. Take a peek as we're going by. Uh, connected light bulbs and all sorts of things. Um, but yeah, the smart sock actually has sensors woven into a sock, and then there is a, a almost like half a wristband that magnetizes onto what would be one of your ankles, and then that Bluetooths to your phone. And if you're a serious runner, apparently, this sock, you know, will we'll figure out if you have heel strike or toe strike, or, you know, I, you know, I'm not an expert on this, but if you're leaning one way or the other and help correct your running style, uh, we'll record your cadence, so many other things. It's not to market yet, but if you're a serious runner, perhaps that's of interest. That is fascinating. So listen, Neil, I also understand, you know, not only are those individual products, you know, like a smart sock or like Sarah, the robot there, making an appearance at CES, but the, uh, car makers as well are getting into it, right? Audi? That is right. We took a really cool drive last night in a self-driving Audi. Uh, and Delphi actually is the third-party company that makes so many uh, components to automobiles. They outfitted this Audi to make it a self-driving car. And I have to say, like you, I've, you know, I've seen the stories, I've read the stories of self-driving car, whatever. This was extremely cool. Uh, the car looks completely like a normal car. You don't see any weird sensors on it, even though it has many, 22 in fact radar, cameras, all kinds of things. And we went for a drive in it in Las Vegas at night. So, I mean, it's at night for one. It was, you know, around rush hour, so it's busy for two. And for three, it's Las Vegas. So you have all kinds of people, drunk and otherwise, who are walking out, potentially dangerous situation for a car that doesn't have a driver. And this thing was perfect. Uh, and you can see a readout. I don't know if we have the video there of what the car is seeing is it identifies all the different targets, slows down, puts the blinker on, makes a turn. We made a turn in traffic with a huge tour bus. Uh, I was sitting in the front passenger seat right next to us. And it was a little bit like, Ugh, you know, are we going to careen into this bus? Perfect. Really interesting. Uh, well, I can imagine there's kind of like a, a, a point of panic there that you wonder, you hope anyway, that the technology is going to kick in there. What about the people that are actually like walking around the floors there? Are they trying to like, you know, cut some deals with some of these vendors to see if they can take home the floor models? Because some of these toys are very cool. Yeah, you know, I have to say there, there's a lot of cool stuff. And then there was a lot of just repetitious stuff. I mean, there are so many people making a band that counts your steps or does something health monitoring wise uh, or, or a watch or an action camera. I mean, I saw an action camera earlier. GoPro obviously is the leader. Most of them have made cameras that are similar but a little bit different. We saw one earlier that looks exactly like a GoPro. They haven't even tried to disguise it. It's an exact clone. So, yeah, and, and as you meet people, and frankly, a lot of them will come out and just sort of grab my arm and, and try to make a pitch. Often when they see, I'm not wearing it right now, the ID of where I work, because they are all very, very anxious to break through. There are large companies here, of course, and then there are many very small companies who are trying to make it. Uh, and there's a lot of competition. I mean, you know, in some ways, this place looks like a Best Buy, 
and they're all competing many of them for that shelf space and there's only so much space for so many you know wearables and so many action cameras so many smart light bulbs you can connect to your home so yeah it's do or die for a lot of these people well then so then is it that kind of like begs the question then do you do you feel like a lot of these inventors a lot of these companies that are coming out there do they feel as if the wheel needs reinvention or they've like latched on to or they've seen the success that a company like GoPro for example has had and they're saying well listen they shouldn't be the only leaders in the market well, you know, of course you have people who innovate. I don't want to use GoPro for an example, but there are people who innovate and actually, you know, surpass the first person to the marketplace. And so there's lots of people who are trying to do things like that. Uh, and then there, but you know, what is more interesting or been more interesting to me over the last almost 48 hours is the number of people, here's more drones, let's go this way. The number of people who are coming up with completely fresh ideas. You know, the running sock was one. Uh, we've seen others that we touched on yesterday, a ring that remote controls things and, you know, a self-tightening belt with a motor in it. Um, and there's actually one I think you might have video of that we, that we took a peek at called Mother. And Mother is this little white, almost looks like a little white plastic snowman that is a hub in your house. And then it comes with these little chips that they call cookies. And you can attach these things to, you know, to a toothbrush, to a pill bottle, to your front door. And basically, they are sensors that then alert on your phone, oh, somebody opened your door. Uh, and they wouldn't even, you know, it's just a small thing there. You would get an alert on your phone. Your when, mother, when who's perhaps in a retirement home, forgot to take her pills or, you know, took too many. Interconnecting so many mundane things in your life. So Neil, lastly, before I let you go, I want to ask you about this one. Of these various areas that people are creating these new ideas, these new services and concepts, things like that, is there one particular area that's standing out? In other words, like are people trying to create things that are helping people live healthier lifestyles, have more fun, is it entertainment, is it for productivity? Is there one sort of like niche that, that they're trying to get their customers? The short answer is no, uh, because this is the opposite of niche here. I mean, this is everything. Uh, the ideas are so random and so many uh, that it's remarkable. Obviously, healthcare is huge, and whether it's to make a buck or to actually help people live a healthier life, that's, you know, I, I can't be the judge of what's on the minds of some of these companies, but there are many different devices to, to self-monitor your body uh, and your bio functions. Drones, huge. Self-driving cars, autonomous cars. I spoke to some extremely smart uh, and creative people, actually, with Delphi, with a self-driving car, who, who believe that they are absolutely going to save thousands of lives, that these not just the self-driving cars, but some of the technology that it uses, which you're seeing in cars on the road now, which you know have automatic braking control. You can't drive into the wall even if you try to. It will stop itself. Keep you from changing the lane into someone or running someone over in the crosswalk. Listen, uh, there's a market for it, but clearly you know, some of these things are going to enter the marketplace. They are already, and they are going to save lives and help people. ABC's Neil Karlinski on Great Assignment there in Las Vegas at the Consumer Electronics Show. Neil, thank you so much. Appreciate it as always. Thanks. And you can stay up to date with this story in real time by downloading the ABC News app and starting the story for exclusive updates on the go. For now, I'm Dan Kleffler in New York.